tonight our guest is Brian. Brian, I'll let you kind of give yourself a little, little background. I, I met Brian a, a, gosh, a couple, couple months ago. He runs a podcast, co-hosts a podcast called Built Different, um, works for Drone Deploy, got a background at Harvard University. And he's got, what I love the most is he's got ex real world experience having been a, uh, an assistant superintendent out on job sites. So Brian, give us your version of uh, your background. We can then jump into a Q and A. We appreciate you being here today. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm not super great at this like intro portion, but uh, originally from Boston, Massachusetts, grew up in a family of construction, two generations, and um, always had like a knack for technology. I kind of had a crossroads where it's like, are you going to go into engineering or become a superintendent or are you going to go into tech? And I, you know, got fortunate enough to where there's like this, you know, this merging of the two. So uh, pretty much what I do now at Drone Deploy coming over from the structure site acquisition is I particularly talk with teams of like VPs of operations, directors of operations, and start talking to them about like, you know, how do we actually create an SOP or how do we build for this? And just more like operations focused than particularly getting too deep in the weeds on the technology. And hopefully I can just kind of talk about my past experience of like implementing both drone employee and truck site at Consigli, a large general contractor in Boston, like a couple of tips and tricks that I used to use just to, you know, keep it top of mind for the field teams and not overwhelm people, but educate them efficiently. What suggestions do you have as far as how do we communicate real reality capture to the field? How, how do we help them identify a problem or identify a pain point that they're having so they want to pay attention? Yeah, that? absolutely. So typically when you're on a job site, the lowest barrier is just like ask about the project. Like, so what's what's uniquely specific about this project? What are the complexities? You know, how how is the relationship with the subcontractors? You, There's always like, uh, I think, uh, what's it? Like six degrees of why. If you ask why six times in a row, you can get to like an actual root cause of a problem. Like, uh, you know, for example, like, oh yeah, the, the logistics on this job set are very difficult. Oh, really? Like, why? Oh, well, because, you know, we're in a downtown area, there's, you know, not that much space for delivery. So we have to install the material the same day it gets in. Oh, why? Because if we don't at that same time, then, you know, blah, blah, blah. And you, and you can kind of keep going down this rabbit hole of why, why, why. And, and that obviously you don't, you don't come out of the, out of the gate swinging with that, but the more you can kind of understand that project, that project, and the more you're actually going to sit there and listen and, and truly do listen to like why this person may like, what is actually on their mind? Like, what are they worried about? What are their concerns? What are their risks? The more they will actually listen to you before you try to like not essentially sell them something or just provide a solution to a pain that they may not realize they have. And um, very often with technology, right? Everybody here may have seen the benefits of what a drone map can do. But when you really talk to a team member, uh, you know, people want a quarter inch hole, not a quarter inch drill. So if you start talking about the map, but if you find out, if you start asking questions that are more prescriptive or along the lines of like, you know, what are some of the more difficult things to document on this site? Oh yeah. Well, the waterproofing or the roofing, um, the roofing details on this on this project are very complex. Like they it dies into corners. Um, we have to make sure, like in the event of eventual water leak, that we are actually documenting the condition that it was turned over in the project. So rather than going right to the map, you go down to, well, what is your current situation to document that roofing? Like, how do you document the condition of the waterproofing today? And they'll pretty much get you down. Well, you know, we go up there, take a couple photos. Great. How do you organize them? Right. So I don't know. I mean, we put them in folders or we just throw them into like a large folder or I manually take them into blue beam and, and drop them onto a floor plan. Great. Like how many hours is that kind of like, how long does that kind of take you? And you can always kind of get back towards a, what is your current process on the left side? And once you figure that out and you can, and then you can assign time to each one of those tasks that great. What if I told you, you could do 
you know, a much more comprehensive coverage of that in 20 minutes, right? We can fly 50 acres with a Mavic 3 Pro in like 30 minutes, right? How long would that take you if you had to do that with a phone? And, you know, let's say, for example, you may know where those photos are, but Mason, uh, Mason's the one who took the photos, but Andrew, you're the one who has to go find them, right? Like, is he going to know where Mason took those photos or is he going to really understand the context without him being there, right? What happens if Mason leaves the job, right? And all those photos are in his phone and they were never uploaded, right? So these are kind of the, the realistic scenarios you have to put it in, in context of people want a high resolution map of the waterproofing. They don't want a drone map. And that's the kind of difference, but the drone map will get you what you want. Got it. Um, so I, I always start with like, what is the actual complex part of this project? Where is your biggest risk? And then prescribe a solution based off exactly what they're saying for that one, that one portion, right? Cause if you can always come out and say, well, you can do earthwork quantities, you can do this, you can do that. But the problem may not be the fact that they have to do the earthwork quantities. The problem may be the fact that they're short staffed and them walking or taking a buggy from one side of that building all the way to the other is going to take them 20 minutes every single time. Right. And like, Oh, well, what if you could just pull up your phone and just go to the other side of the map? Um, so always start with like what people actually, what is their exact problem right now? And then, and then work your way backwards from that. What would be some leading questions to get from her to help identify a pain point or identify a, a problem if yeah. she's trying to get pricing for photos? For, only? First thing I'd ask is like, all right, who who wants the photos and what do they want photos of and when, right? Okay, so th this is the scenario. Owner, Costco. They want photos of every milestone. They want photos of steel completion. They want photos of site utilities, right? They want uh, roofing completion. They just want basic progress photos so they can update their investors or they can show other people, you know, areas of the building, right? So first I'd be like, why do they want photos? What do they, what do they want? Not what, sorry, not what is the deliverable that you're asking for versus like, what do they, what, what do they actually want from you? And then I'd go deeper and say, all right, is this like a contract? Uh, is this in your general, like division one specifications that you have to fulfill a requirement? Uh, are they looking for cool marketing content to post on Instagram? Like they want a photo, but what, why do they want that photo? And if that person doesn't know, I usually try to get, be like, hey, do you mind involving some people? Because what we want to do is we want to make sure you, we provide you with the best service for the best um, for the best price, and you're not overpaying, uh, or you're not overspending, or we're not wasting your time. Um, so it, always like get closer to who would know why, and then work backwards from there again, right? So there's a requirement. Okay, well, what's the requirement? The requirement is to properly document. Uh, each of you know these phases. Okay, great. Why do they want? Why do you need to properly document them in case of a risk or an, or an issue? Great. In this same amount of time, we could actually map it. All those photos would be geolocated on a map, and you'd be able to quickly reference them for more than just the reason you're asking. But you'd be fulfilling the requirement, and now you actually have a deliverable that your team can use. Got it. Um, and then I'd go into like, well, what's your team structure like? You know, who's on the team? Who else is going to be looking at these photos? Do you see yourself having value or are you checking a box to the owner? In your, in your experience is when the, when the owner's involved and the owners from the top down, they send a thing to the GC that says, hey, we need four photos or we need a photo and a panel. Or we need a, they usually want photos or they want photos and a, a video maybe with their, for their branding purposes, how do we pivot the conversation from, okay, we understand why Costco wants these. How do we pivot the conversation to um, how do we convince them that, that the GC wants these what's in it for the GC you're, you're, for, you're checking the box that you're delivering these to Costco. 
how do we then get the GC to understand the value of yeah. why they why they need the photos, the things they can do with the the maps and the photos? I, I usually bluntly ask right off the bat. I'm like, great, we'll help you fulfill the owner requirement. They want some Instagram photos. You know, are you going to look at these? Do you even care? Right off the bat, like, you know, do you care to even like, do you care about these photos at all for yourself? I do. Why? Because I need to do my monthly requisitions every month and I need to, you know, submit verifications to the owners for how much progress has been made. Okay, great. When you start talking about monthly requisitions, what are you doing? Oh, well, I need to show general percentage of progress complete. Great. Well, what if you could actually just measure? Oh, that would be amazing. Like I'd be able to check how much roofing was done, how much earth, you know, how much of the project scope was completed. Great. Now, what if I told you in the same amount of time it would take, you know, those 50 photos, adding 30 more minutes would actually give you the ability to measure and do all these other things. So I'd work backwards from that rather than just leading directly with this is something I'm like people, you know, inherently you're everybody here is always going to come from a good place of, I want you to have a better result. You have these, all the capabilities. I want to unlock these for you. But sometimes the person on the other side hears it as they're trying to sell me something else, or they're trying to upsell me on something. So you always want to lead with the, well, what's in it for them? And what are they currently doing right now that they could actually be like, hey, look, for really not that large of an increase, it's only going to increase maybe four or $500. I could probably save you five hours just walking back and forth from the site per team member a week. Like, absolutely. Like, great. If the owner's already going to pay for it, the owner, you can sell this uh, benefit to the owner as well on why this map would be needed. Um, but I think very often, like, the, I love the analogy of people want a quarter inch hole, not a quarter inch drill. If you're like, hey, like, look at this drill. It has the best grip. It's amazing. You know, you have all these different attachments. But if someone's only worried about how they're going to, you know, core through this concrete wall, et cetera then sometimes it's hard to correlate how this is going to end up to that. I just had a quick question because um, I ran into the, the exact same thing with one of our Costco accounts our, or a project that we're doing that ultimately it's a Costco. They need to deliver um, photos every month to Costco. And I was talking to the super and trying to explain to them we're we're already there we're already giving you the photos that are be, that you're required to give to Costco why don't you let me show you how they can benefit you and they still didn't want anything so you know we just take the pictures and send them off we don't even look at them and I'm like you're getting yeah. them they they could be of value to you you know and you're already paying for it yeah so that's one of the hurdles I run into sometimes I, I mean and it's it's you always run into that same typical analogy of like there's like the group of people pushing the car that has like the four concrete square wheels and they're like no i'm too busy and like someone's trying to show them the the tires um i mean i always just a like rapport is always there like if every time that person does see you you're always trying to like teach them something that's to them they may only take it as like Human nature is you do not want to talk about things you are not familiar with, right? If I don't feel like I'm an expert in this area, a lot of people get kind of uncomfortable. Like, look, I don't know anything about what you're talking about, right? I'm, I'm stressed. I'm busy. I got some other things going on. But something that I, I promise you, I don't care how hard, how hard-headed or unapproachable someone may be, everybody on that job site has immense pride in what they're building. Take that time to be like, well, what are you building, right? Like, what are you what are you building right now? Like, what are the challenges? What's going on in the site? And, and a lot of people, you know, I can't say 100%, but overall, like people will tell you like what's on their mind, what their problem is. And the second you actually hear that, oh, I'm dealing with this issue right now, that blah, blah. It's like, oh, well, actually, what if I like, what if I told you I may have a photo that can help that? Or if you did this with only 20 minutes, we could have prevented you having to go through a folder for eight hours. Right. 
So yeah. I always, always start with like, you have to, you have to genuinely just understand like, what is the project? What's going on in that project? Who's on that project? What's the relationships? Like the more you can get to know people on that site. Um, but yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Cause sometimes the owner, um, general contractor relationships, interesting, depending on how often they work with each other, because they may be required to do a lot of these things that in their mind, they see it as for checking the box to make the owner happy, but they don't necessarily see that it can help them as well. Historically, and like, the, I'm just trying to give a little background, like historically project teams have not found the value from those photos because they haven't had an easy quick way to automatically drop those photos on the floor plans or on the site plans or actually get something out of them other than a camera roll full of photos of their children and then photos of random corners that are, you know, good luck trying to go find a inside interior bedroom on a multifamily project that's 20 stories high that every room looks the same, right? So yeah. people's initial reaction of photo documentation is it's something that I have to do. But typically, whenever I need it to help me, most of the time, it's more it's more associated with pain than it is a pleasant experience. So there's two ways I think about photo documentation and like site documentation and period. There's proactive and there's reactive. With what you can do now, you can become more proactive. So great. How can I measure quantities every week to make sure we're keeping on track of schedule? But in the past, everybody's experiences, pipes, pipes burst in the wall. I got to go find, I got to go look through this folder of thousands of photos or, you know, somebody, <laughs> some simple, but like boom, left hit the side of the building. And I just need, like, I need to make sure I document that. So a lot of people's experiences with photos, they see it as insurance. Like, oh, you're just, this is like an insurance tool. And like, how many here, how many people here get excited to buy car insurance? Right. You're not like, oh man, car insurance is the best. Like when I get an accident, like a lot of people associate with the reactive and like, um, typically when they're looking through these photos, like something negative happened or they're doing some sort of very lengthy requirement. Um, so I guess a lot of it comes from like, you may be dealing with a pain of somebody and it's not personally against you, but always build rapport through finding out what's on the project. And if they mention like a specific pain, and yes, you're taking photos for the owner, but what if you just started taking progress photos in a specific area that they referenced, right? Like to add a photo is not going to add you that much time, but you come next week or next month with the progress side by side for that same person. And you start, you know, the light bulbs will start going off in their head. In your experience, is it is it just baked in the price of the, the, the GC just comes up with, a, they find out what the costs are, they just pass that cost on in, as part of the contract or is, does the they just have a separate line and they, they tell the owner, look, it's going to cost $500 a month for drone services. And we're just going to bill you for that. And you'll reimburse us. How does that money flow typically? Yeah. So, I mean, typically if it's built into this, uh, the general requirements, so your division one specification, the, depending on what that requirement's asking for, then it could be covered by the cost. And then there'll be like an item for like, There'll be a line item for like quality control budget or, you know, et cetera. Um, if somebody gets introduced to this technology and now all of a sudden they only budgeted $2,000 for this system, um, but now you're coming out of nowhere and you're saying, hey, it's $20,000, you can always pitch it to the construction team and then pitch it to the owner um, where they can either say, yep, we actually want to add this in and then they can they'll they'll get they'll allocate the budget towards it or sometimes even the general contractor will say hey this is something that's going to protect us as well we'd rather invest that because that twenty thousand dollars is easily going to save us you know two to three hours per team member a week which will pay itself back in you know two or three weeks are there any things that pop to your mind as you're working on this document as far as key roi points so you're dealing with teams that are designed to never give a number unless they are a thousand percent certain that is the correct dollar value, right? So when you say, how much money did that save you? Most people will default to a lot. They're not going to say, unless they know it's $10,312 because there was one specific item that they were able to fight against, <laughs> right? 
then they probably won't tell you a number. And even if they had a number, it's, it's very taboo to just disclose that information publicly externally, right? Yep. But something people are more liberal talking about is time, right? So like you can always take the scenario of you have a requirement to document um, the waterproofing on the facade of this building, right? How you currently do that, just literally take a notebook, step one, how are you doing that? I take out a phone and I walk the exterior. How long does it take you to walk the exterior? Well, if I'm walking at a normal pace, you know, X amount of minutes. Great. What do you do with those photos after you do that? Great. So I put those into folders. I label them by elevation. Great. Like how long is that going to take you per elevation? That may take me another hour and a half. Great. And once you have to go find those photos, you have to upload them online. How do you kind of share them with everybody else? This is how I do it. You take the time that it took that person to do that first task. Then you just compare it to what it would take you in the drone deploy app. It'll tell you the time. And once they drop that photos in, it's done. Like it's, it's already uploaded. There's no, you're not going in there and associating an elevation to a photo or a, you know, a map to where it is. It's just done. Right. Yep. You can, the, the things that are so simple are the most effective. Like, you know, your rule be old school. How long have those, you know, like uh, teeth whitening uh, ads been around? Like they'll show you someone with like really messed up teeth and then they'll show a photo of like before and after or like Jenny Craig classic, like one of the best ad campaigns ever ran. Super simple before and after photos, right? That's as long as you can associate, this is a task that you're going to have to do anyways. What if you could just pay to reduce something off your plate? People never want to feel like they need to do something else on top of what they're already doing. But if you're saying you're already doing this one thing, what if we could take it off your plate and build it into the same budget you're already paying for? What percentage of job sites do they take the time to even to document old school? Like how, how many, what percentage of does every job site have to get documented, whether they're walking around with an iPhone going click, 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 or do, do, do 30% of job sites, they just they just build, they don't, they don't take pictures, they don't even care about this stuff. What percentage of them are even documenting it the old-fashioned way, would you guess? I mean, ideally, everybody should be taking some sort of photos or, you know, photos are, you know, that it's completely unbiased. It is exactly what it is, right? But I constantly like my one of my favorite quotes is if you don't have time to do it the first time, you're definitely not going to have time to do it the second time. And pretty much the the concept is like if, if they are documenting now, they may be saving times later, but it's almost inevitable things will go wrong on that project where you will need some sort of photo reference at some point. Right. So the bar lowest barrier fruit, no, no project is perfect. So let's assume at least one issue where this scenario would happen, right? You can always get to a point where like, on your last project, did you have any scenarios where you had to go dig through a photo, of like a folder of photos? Or did you ever have a photo that you wish you had? And you can always go back to somebody's past projects to help them recognize a pattern of, this is probably gonna happen again. And if I can actually prevent it now, now's the time. The the biggest difference in people's minds is everybody thinks it's important, right? A lot of people will be like, yep, this is important, but what makes it urgent, right? Like, why do they need to do it right now? Do they need to take their wallet on and be like, yes, go ahead, do it. And the typical urgency is blocked by some sort of time constraint, AKA something's about to get covered up, right? The walls, the drywalls are get, about to get put on. The utilities are about to get buried. If you can create the sense of urgency, like on your last project, have you ever dealt with a utility issue, right? What if you had the photos? Great. Well, you're about to cover up these utilities. We can create a map. So if you need to take a measurement or go look inside at another time, you can do that. Great. Go do it today rather than, ah, maps are cool. That's important. I'll do it one day when I have time. Um, Corey had a question. Yeah. Uh, what is... Reality capture. 
I I mean, you know, us us tech folk, we just love uh, all these different terms. I mean, I got to we have to extend this <laughs> webinar for another forty five minutes now just to explain what that is. <laughs> what is reality, right? Is so, <laughs> so I I guess it's it's really just the concept of a digital representation of something that is is real. So capturing reality, right? Like how are you representing a physical asset in a digital format? In my mind, I just call it like slight documentation, photo documentation, because in general, people may be more familiar with the latter term than the former. Um, if you're talking to someone a little more technical, but like, what are you doing for a reality capture program? If they know, if they're really into that, a lot of people can be like, like I said, stay in areas where people feel comfortable and they they know the they know the they know what words are, right? If you ask someone, what did you do for reality capture on your last project? They may look at you like you got five heads. But if you go, you know, how are you how are you previously documenting your job sites? They'll like like photo documenting your job sites. Like, well, you know, we just kind of take photos. And that kind of will lead you down a better path. Right. And like, like, that's why I kind of gave that background of in the past, site documentation may not have had the best rep. And you have a really good experience to have that 180 degree mind shift change for a lot of these teams. Two things I'm going to leave you with that were really great lessons learned that I use all the time when demoing or talking to a team. The first one is time to value. So from the first time you show somebody to how long it takes them to get value, the shorter that time is, the more the aha moment's going to be, right? So for example, Corey, say you have a, you know, say you're a superintendent and you have a quality control manager three states away, right? He's very specialized or she's very specialized and she needs to help you with a very specific problem that only that person can help you with, right? I tell you, I can actually capture your site right now and within an hour, that quality control manager can go walk around the interior and they can go to the exterior, right? That time to value is going to be sub one hour for that person. Within one hour, they've already started seeing benefits. So whenever I go to document, I would say document right before some sort of milestone phase or something that's about to get covered up, right? Whenever someone does their first walk, they typically do it right the first day they're about to drywall. Drywall's up. They need to go find something. They have the photo on their phone and they're like, whoop, that was helpful, right? And that time to value, the, the more you can reduce that, the better. And then the second piece of advice I will give you is going to be um, always try to associate your cadence to some or other type of event. And I call it like anchoring. So if they have a weekly owner's meeting on Wednesdays, Talk to them about planning to capture on Tuesdays, right? Or if they're building out a schedule and they have all these milestones, you can recommend say, hey, sometimes people will even build in a little schedule item that says, make sure to call Tony, make sure to call Corey right before the milestone is about to close up. So it's a reminder that they know when to call. Um, it sounds dumb, but when you're trying to track a million things, the more the less forgetful you can, you, you know, the less brain power it takes or the less forgettable you can be by associating or yourself to another item that is very important to them, the more you'll pop up and be top of mind.